Hello and welcome to this new video in the Power BI playlist. In this video, we will again see importing data from SQL database, but this time we'll use a stored procedure instead. Let's get started. So this is another interesting thing which would come to use, although it depends it up. I have never seen it being implemented, but I just tried this and it did work out quite earlier when I was thinking about this. So firstly, We'll go to the database. We need to have a stored procedure. So where do you find them? Under the programmability, programmability folder in the database, you have stored procedures. Now currently there are none because we haven't created one. So let us create one. How to create a stored procedure? You can do it this almost the same way what we had like uh, the view, but some differences. So I'll directly start this way. Create procedure, SP, and give it a name anything I say extract extract data and then we have to say as and use the block begin and end and between this you can write your select statements so I'll say select for example star from dim product in this way and then I can run but then we can just tweak this little bit as we did in the last example. I'll put this as let's say uh, a join condition or maybe any any scenario that you could think of. So on, sorry, join fact internet sales. And here we'll say F on P dot product key is equal to, sorry, this should be P dot product key is equal to F dot product key and here include only those columns P dot product key comma we'll say P dot English product name comma F dot sales amount and that's it so first we'll test only this if this is working fine and you can include any other columns as well and let us also take one more column over here we'll say P dot color so let's say one firstly why stored procedures so as compared to you know views uh, stored procedure on its own are the optimized objects we will cover stored procedures in details in the sql playlist very soon we have not yet covered but we'll do so and when we'll do you i would advise you to check it out as well and uh, we'll also cover in detail views etc and the other advanced concept like common table expressions etc very soon now here what I want to do is, um, the first thing is I want to parameterize this so I can control that what thing I want to pass. So parameterize in the sense you can uh, define some input over here which will be passed through this procedure and then the data can be filtered over here for example. So how do you do that? So that's why I've included color. So from Power BI when I'm calling the stored procedure or maybe when I'm calling this stored procedure from Power BI or anywhere else, I can pass an argument and control what data I want. Control in the sense it will act as a filter. So for example, I want to control what kind of data this is returning. If I run this, now it is returning me the entire data set, all the colors. But I want a specific color, let's say red, blue. So how do I make that functionality? So here you will add a clause where P dot color is equal to but if you write this way right this becomes hard coded it will guaranteed return you only red color but you want to make this dynamic so how do you do that in order to do that you will have to define uh, parameters over here so you always begin with at the rate and choose anything that you want so i'll say color at the rate and then the name of the parameter and declare this as where care for example 10 and if there are multiple parameters, you separate them by comma. Remember, each parameter should begin with at the rate, then a name, space, data type, and multiple parameters separated by comma. What I'll do is I'll call this over here. So when this stored procedure is being called, it will take two things, the first procedure name and then the parameter. You can also have a stored procedure without the parameter, but then I just wanted to also make it dynamic. So now I'll select all of this, create, refresh this, I see that now how do I use this in order to use this you will not say select you will have to use the word execute or exec and then this name obviously it's a standard practice to call the schema name but since we are using the default DBO I'm not doing it if I run this way 
here it will say a parameter color was expected it was not supplied so now let me pass for example black so run now you see it's only black color data so this is the beauty of it how do you now do this this stored procedure you don't have to usually do the database people will do it for you your job is to just you know execute this over here and see if you're getting that data or not so but since we were learning this it's important for us to create let's get the server name and since we are going to be writing a statement over here we need the database name as well i'll go back and here what i'll do is i'll just copy the same either exec or execute that's it just click again okay so so many possibilities are there when it comes to databases specifically sql databases i mean and there you can see black color great now how can this be controlled i'll show you so by the time this loads come back over here this factor has made our entire stored procedure dynamic as i said it is not compulsory to have parameters but usually you will see parameters because that is what it makes it dynamic and you can have multiple parameters over here this was just an illustration of it so as i said earlier watch out for sql playlist we'll be releasing it very soon and i can see the color over here is black and 9843 rows here as well you have 9843 so now simply let's say if you run on the database side this is how it will look if you run with red all you have to do is just change that parameter which will be passed over here then in turn over here and then the entire data will be fetched how do you change it over here in case you just wanted to although i have never seen as i said earlier click on edit query uh, how you know stored procedure being implemented but just you know we are in the process of doing that here all you got to do is just the same thing the way we change the query change this to red click outside edit permission and run then you're done close and apply so there you go there should be 4949 rows the same number what you're getting over here so that's a simple example so now you slowly would have understood what is the importance of SQL and why I was emphasizing that you should know to an extent. And uh, the more you know, the more will be better for you to work in the data world, not especially in Power BI. Definitely Power BI for sure, but the other aspects also are beneficial. So keep learning and uh, mostly this set of series is almost done for now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.